Zane Claude Pelter with Otters TV here with the uh, former Evansville Otter, uh, Patrick McGuff. And uh, Patrick, I know uh, you're not playing anymore, but you still have to kind of be following the current situation with baseball. Just what are your initial thoughts and who do you symp sympathize with uh, knowing that there's a lot of players ready to play baseball, but they just haven't been able to do it yet? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not playing anymore, but I'm coaching in college now, so it affected us immediately. So, I mean, immediately I sympathize for our players. Uh, this is a, I'm at University of South Carolina Upstate in Spartanburg, South Carolina, so I sympathize for them a lot. This is our first year here as a staff, and the group that we had really wanted to change the culture and turn the culture over. So, I mean, immediately them, and then obviously I have a ton of friends that are playing professionally and Evansville and all over with affiliates all over the country. So I, mean, I sympathize for those guys too. I mean, my, as a minor leaguer and independent ball guy, you're looking for constantly looking for opportunity. So, I mean, it, it really sympathize for those guys that they're not getting the opportunity to move on and move up and do what they love to do. You were a star at Moorhead state. So if the situation of COVID would have happened, your senior year at Moorhead state is like, can you even comprehend what you would have, thought or felt you know just seeing your season end just like that yeah i mean no it would have been horrible i i wouldn't wouldn't have gotten a chance to get drafted because i wasn't that good the first half of my senior season so i wouldn't have had a chance to get drafted i wouldn't have had a chance to compete for an ovc championship which we fell short of but i mean competing for it's what you work for in the first place so yeah i, I can't imagine what the guys are going through right now and i mean i I'm going through it as a coach, but it's a little less grueling as a coach than it, than it is as a player, I'm sure. So you mentioned the fact that you're at South Carolina Upstate. You're now in a different role, but in the same game. How has college baseball, just from the experiences you were able to witness preseason and then the first couple of weeks before COVID shut it down, are there differences between college when you played for Moorhead State and now that you're coaching as an assistant at uh, South Carolina Upstate? Uh, well, ironically, there's not a lot of differences because who I coach for is who coached me at Moorhead. So we, we kind of run the same ship and it's a winning, it's a winning ship, which is good, which is good for us. And that's what we love to do. We love to win and that's all we preach. And so it's kind I, it was an easy transition for me because I played for coach McGuire for two years. So very easy transition. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of similarities, just different spots a lot warmer here than than uh morehead state so that's a little bit different but yeah it's and as a coach you really just see like more behind the scenes stuff it's it's all the same the goal is to win that that never changes from as a player to a coach but that's pretty much the the same goal no matter what but you just see a little see a little more behind behind the scenes stuff that you've kind of always been interested in as a interested in as a player but you never really got to ask the question right so in terms of where you want to go with your career do you see yourself just moving up that coaching ladder then and just seeing how far you can go with that or do you are you eyeing something else uh yeah i mean i i'd love to move up the coaching ladder i i, I re really want to get a a full-time pitching coach job to where i can run my own program and not that i don't like my i'm, I'm the volunteer assistant right now so i kind of co-handle the pitching side of our uh the co-handle co the pitching side of our staff right now mm -hmm. with our pitching coach right. so i really i really like to run my own program i think i'd be really good at that so yeah ultimately i'd love to move on and be a pitching coach and i don't know if i'd be a head coach in the future or not uh, that's probably something to think about down the road but for now yeah i'd love to move on and be a pitching coach in the ranks of college baseball or even professional baseball I do have to ask you, it seems like, you know, you played for Evansville for parts of two seasons, and it seems like every time you started off with Evansville, you had such a fantastic month of May, early part of June, and both years you were signed and picked up. Just how was your experience in Evansville, and what fond memories do you have, not only of your teammates, but, you know, Bossy Field, considering just the unique nature of that ballpark? Yeah, I I loved Evansville. I I tell people all the time I wouldn't play have played independent ball anywhere else in the country. I love playing for Andy. I love playing for Bobby and Max and Boots and all the other coaches that were involved. And, and I mean, I, I truly did enjoy it. And 
I had fun with my teammates. I met some guys that that I still talk to today. I was I was texting Austin nicely before I got on the got on the call with you. So I mean, I met some guys that I'm going to talk to and keep in touch with and have friends with for the rest of my life. And I mean, bossy field wise, and I've said this tons of times before. A lot of people coming in don't appreciate the uniqueness and the like, the beauty of it. But I loved it. I loved like I loved the shape. I loved the culture that it that it had. I truly did. Like even when I'm up in the stands charting before my next start, I, I like enjoyed being able to see everything around me and kind of the scenes. The scenes from the stands was awesome. Scenes from the field was awesome. I really did love playing there. You've been drafted you've played an affiliated ball you've ended up in independent ball only to go back to affiliated baseball if there's a baseball player just a young baseball player coming out of college who feels frustrated with the way that the game you know as a whole is going right now just with the lockout on the mlb level the things in the minor leagues that are going on what type of message would you have to them to you know stay that course and keep fighting to play the game that they love uh, I would just tell them, almost like you just said, just keep pushing. Uh, I mean, baseball is such a game that you're going to fail, and you're going to have good, and you're going to have bad, and you're going to have some middle road. So, I mean, it, it, your constant ability to push forward and move forward and just be the best you that you can be. And, I mean, I know the one sounds a lot a lot cliche, control what you can control. I mean, all the, the quarantine stuff right now and everything that's happening, and it's stuff that players – themselves can't control at all so i mean they just have to keep pushing i mean keep lifting weights keep themselves in shape give themselves the best opportunity to move on up in the ranks in college baseball or professional baseball wherever they're at do you ever get an inch to try to come back and play or do you tell yourself before that even becomes a thought no uh yeah i get it every once in a while i'll get it like just for a brief moment, but I'm like, I shut it down quick. It, I, my arm, my arm's done for now. In the fall, it was still pretty good, but it's done for now. It's there's no chance. <laughs> right, and you found a new calling, and so it seems to be per- working out pretty well for you so far. So obviously, continued success there in that new journey of baseball for you, and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. He's uh, Patrick McGuff, one of the former aces of the Evansville Otters. I'm Zane Claude Belter. This has been Otters TV.